In this video, we are going to cover highlights of the evolution of color vision. This is number eight in our series about color vision. In the two previous videos, we looked at the levels of color vision among different animals. For example, most marine mammals have one color cone and therefore see the world like this, in grayscale. Most terrestrial mammals have two color cones and see the world like this. Some primates, including us humans, have three color cones and see the world like this, richly colored. Some animals have even more cone colors. In those videos, we talked about the advantages color vision added for each environment, which is another way of figuring out the reason they evolved. We will look at the evolution of color sensing as seen through changes in the opsin proteins. You may remember that the opsin proteins are responsible for determining the peak wavelength of light a photoreceptor is sensitive to. In other words, the opsins control the variety of colors like blue, green, or red that we are able to see. Rods and cones, which are located in the retina, are the photoreceptors that we use to receive the photons of light. In both types of photoreceptors, the light sensing structure has two parts. Retinal is the molecule that absorbs the photon of light. It is derived from vitamin A. The retinal molecule is embedded in an opsin protein. The key point for the current discussion is that the retinal is the same for all the colors. It is differences in the opsin molecule that determine the color of light each photoreceptor is sensitive to. The opsins are found just about everywhere in the animal kingdom and have more than one function, so a little background is in order. The ones that we have been talking about are classed as type 2 opsins, so you might guess there are also type 1 opsins. In general terms, type 1 opsins occur in very simple one-celled organisms like bacteria and algae, so we are calling them microbial opsins. In addition to light sense, they can also act as ion pumps. Type 2 opsins occur in eukaryotes and higher animals. They are mostly used for vision, with a small segment participating in circadian rhythms. Type 1 and type 2 opsins are quite structurally similar, so that on first glance, it would seem they came from a common origin. They are both proteins of quite similar shape that cross the entire photoreceptor cell membrane. Each depends on cradling a light-sensitive molecule of retinal. But their differences are significant. In addition to their existence in different types of organisms, type 1 opsins play a role in other cell processes, while type 2 opsins are almost exclusively involved in light detection. Recent studies have found significant structural differences, strongly suggesting that these two opsin classes probably evolved separately that is, not from a common ancestral protein. The reason for spending time here is to demonstrate that the ability to sense light is both fundamental and ancient. Now, on to opsins and light sensation. This set of five opsins is thought to have been present in the ancestor of vertebrate animals. Four opsins were for cones, and one was for rods. That is the one labeled RH1. A more accurate way to characterize the opsins is by their spectral ranges. The naming convention works like this. Blue light has a short wavelength, so these are called either blue cones or S cones. Here is the peak of rod sensitivity, but they don't contribute to color vision. The green sensing cone operates in the middle wavelength, so it is called an M cone. Toward the red end, this cone senses longer wavelength light, so it's called an L cone. The three color opsins shown here provide our trichromatic or three color vision. Here again is the range of opsin pigments that are thought to have been present at the beginning of the vertebrate line. Four opsins for color and one for rods. The additional opsin senses in the ultraviolet range. As vertebrate lines diverged, each branch ended up with a somewhat different complement of cones. How and why did so many colors arise? 
This diagram shows the lineage of opsin pigment development. Let's go through this in steps. The first opsin is a very old molecule dating back to primordial times and single-celled organisms. Its peak sensitivity was at medium wavelength, around 555 nanometers. This is near our human L cone, which, according to the usual naming convention, we have been calling the red cone. But the actual color at this wavelength is yellow-green. As we noted before, with only one color cone available, there's no ability to distinguish between colors, only degrees of brightness. About 500 million years ago, the second pigment opsin turned up as a derivative of the L pigment. It was sensitive to short wavelengths in the range of UV and blue light, shown on the far left. Having a second opsin at a different place in the spectrum not only broadens the range of light sensitivity, but also allows for a first level of discrimination between colors. Both the extra range and the basic color sense would give an advantage in survival. To realize that advantage, the nervous system had to develop circuitry to be able to compare the information from the two cone types. Take a moment and think about that. If a genetic event causes a new pigment to show up, it won't be of use unless the brain has the circuitry to use that new information. This circuit would be the neural basis for the blue-yellow opponent channel we talked about in a previous video. This is a very old system. The third color opsin pigment, which is important to us, appeared much more recently, between 30 and 40 million years ago. The middle wavelength opsin came about as a modification of the already present long wavelength opsin. Here I am showing the three color opsins present in humans, which together give three dimensions to our color vision. With the development of the new pigment, the brain had to have a mechanism to use that information. So, when the middle wavelength pigment arrived, what wiring did it use? This is still a matter of some debate. One theory is that it used the system that was already in place for spatial vision. That ended up adding a new red-green opponent channel to the old blue-yellow channel, giving us our color range. Details of that are covered in a previous video. What is the advantage of three colors over two? As an example, here is a Rousseau painting that shows the world as it looks with one cone in grayscale. A primate with two cones would see it in a blue-yellow palette. An important thing to understand about primates is that a large part of their diet consists of fruit. Ripe fruit is better, but in this view, how can you tell ripe versus unripe? Everything looks the same. Here, in the three-color view, the advantage of the third pigment is strikingly apparent, being able to see the red or orange color of ripe fruit. Now, let us back up a bit and account for rhodopsin. From short wavelength 1, a second short wavelength pigment developed SW2. From SW2 came two RH pigments, both sensitive to middle range wavelengths. RH2 is used by some animals for mid-range colors. The RH1 developed into rhodopsin, present in rods. That happened after the cone pigments were already in place. What wiring did that use? One theory is that rods piggybacked onto existing cone circuitry. Here again are the original five opsin families, and this is how they got that way. The use of cones for bright light and rods for dim light made vision into a duplex system, which gives us the ability to adapt to a really wide range of light levels. What a marvelous and flexible system. Before I finish, I want to introduce one more topic. As animal eyes evolved, the type 2 opsins branched off into several subgroups. The ciliary group occurs mostly in vertebrate eyes, and includes the opsins used in rods and cones. Number three, the rhabdomeric group, occurs mostly in invertebrate eyes, 
for example, the opsins used in the compound dyes of insects. Among the rhabdomeric group is melanopsin, which has an interesting story of its own. Even though melanopsin is in the rhabdomeric group, which was associated with invertebrates, it was unexpectedly found in mammal eyes. It is functional, that is, it senses light, but it is not located in a rod or a cone, and it doesn't contribute to vision. It is located, surprisingly, in a small subset of ganglion cells. By its function and location, it gives us a clue about how the different neural parts of the retina came to be associated. It is a new and interesting discovery, and that is the subject of our next video. Here are selected references if you want to read more.